watching Sports Beat. Thanks for watching Sports Beat on this Saturday. We look ahead to the NFL playoffs in a moment. You'll hear from Taysom Hill and his teammates and coach as they get ready to play the Rams. But let's start with the Red Hot Utah Jazz. They've now won six straight games after taking care of business against the worst team in the NBA last night, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Welcome back, Rodney Hood and Alec Burks. Both got an ovation from the crowd. Their first game in Utah after getting traded to Cleveland. The Cavs have the worst record in the league, and you can tell why. The Jazz take advantage. Rudy dominating the paint. And of course, Donovan did Donovan things. Oh my, showtime! But no, I mean, I mean, Donovan, Joe, everybody's, you know, finding me when I'm open. And then me just being confident, not going to open shots. Thunder and Sixers. Fantastic finish in this game. Tied at 113 with 15 seconds to play. Dennis Schroeder from the back of, from the book of what were you thinking on that? He throws this one up for grabs. Jimmy Butler to steal and score. Sixers with a two-point lead with six seconds to go. Coming out of the timeout, Paul George. At some point, and he does. The three ball quickly. Got it! The free throw good, Thunder up two, still five seconds for the Sixers. Jimmy Butler gets a shot off, but it's no good. Boy, this game was emotional and heated. 31 points for George, 31 for Embiid. Thunder are two games ahead of the Jazz in the standings. He's been covering sports in Utah for more than a decade. The last few years on the Utah Jazz beat at the Trib. You can read his work now on The Athletic and follow him on Twitter, at T Jones on the NBA. Tony Jones is our guest tonight. Thanks for having me. We go all the way back to your prep beat days. Way back. It's been a long time. The Alta Bingham days. Yes, and it's been cool to see you get to the point where you are now. It's also cool to see somebody from the East Coast make Utah their home. Yes. Why do you love it here? Um, I love it because um, it's, it's, it's such an underrated sports market yeah. uh, in terms of uh, you have the Jazz, you have Utah, you have BYU, you have RSL, the, the fans. Uh, are very vociferous and they're very knowledgeable. Um, and I, I love it because, you know, it's a great place to raise a family and I'm raising a family and, and uh, so it's, it's, it's definitely been a good spot to uh, call home. We even have some family over here making faces at you, so yeah. always supporting. Yes, <laughs> yes, these are these haters that we talk about yes. on camera. So. <laughs> they're even in our own family. Well, let's talk, let's dig into the jazz here. Wow, times can change pretty quick. Six-game winning streak. You kind of saw this coming, though. You've been telling fans, be patient. Just relax. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Don't jump off a building. And here we are. It kind of is okay. And what you've been talking about is coming true. Well, I, I think, you know, you know, I've said it, you know, a lot. Um, you know, that schedule has been, you know, has been very non-conducive to playing good basketball because, you know, number one, the strength of the schedule, and number two, you know, the, the, the amount of road games, and you triple that with, you know, the lack of days of rest in between. So now the schedule's lightened up in terms of the schedule strength. You're getting more home games, and you're getting more days off uh, in between to, to practice and, and rest and, and prepare. So, um, you know, that, that hasn't been all it has been. I mean, the defense is, is, has really improved. Uh, they've, they've, the Jazz have fixed some things there. And they fix some things in, in some other spots. Um, but, you know, when you have a schedule that's conducive to playing good basketball, if you're a good basketball team and the Jazz are a good basketball team, you're probably going to play good basketball. So Donovan Mitchell seems to have flipped a switch. I know you've probably had some conversations with him. What's changed in the last 8 to 10 games with Donovan Mitchell? Well, his, his reads off the pick and roll have, have, gotten, have gotten demonstratively better um, in, in the... He had kind of tunnel vision mm -hmm. in the first two months of the season, and teams knew that, so they knew that if he was coming downhill off the pick and roll, he's probably going to shoot the basketball. And you know, when you know that one a guy is going to do one thing, and you have to defend against one thing, uh, it, he becomes that guy becomes easy to defend, and that's why you saw Donovan Mitchell's numbers, in, in terms of his shooting numbers, uh, dip so drastically. Um, but, you know, in the last month, you know, he's, 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 he's mixed it up. He's coming downhill on one possession, he's putting up a floater. He's coming downhill on another possession, he's going straight to the basket. Or he's finding shooters in the corner. Or, gasp, 
he's actually throwing lobs to Rudy Gobert because that's a running joke yeah. uh, inside the Jazz locker room. Rudy will always go up to Donovan. He goes up to Donovan every day. Why aren't you throwing me lobs? Why aren't you throwing me lobs? I'm open. You know how Rudy is. Yeah. Rudy's always open in his mind. Uh -huh. So against the Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, he actually threw Rudy a couple of lobs. So, you know, he's mixing it up. He's making the right reads. Uh, he's, he's got a much better sense of when to shoot and when to pass right now. So transitioning now into Rudy Gobert, as you mentioned, he's just been consistent all year. Hasn't been injured. That's been huge for him. His play's been awesome. You better awesome. knock on wood. <laughs> Did I just screw something up for the Jazz? You better knock on wood. So sorry, <laughs> but he's been awesome. So why has he been so dominant this year? And he seems like even really lately, I mean, he's doing stuff that only Carl Malone has done in his Jazz jersey. He's been incredible. Well, he's a guy right now. I mean, I, I'd say that he's one of the two best centers in the NBA. Mm. Um, you know, the, you know, I know Nikola Jokic is having a great season in Denver, but you know, in, in my mind, it to me, the be two best centers in the league are, are Rudy and jo Joel Embiid, and you could put those two, and you could flip it in terms of, you know, what the order is or whatever. I won't argue with you on that, but I think yeah. that those two guys are the two best centers in the league, and he's become a two-way star. Um, obviously, the defense has always been there. And he's even taken that up to, to a kind of career level uh, in the last month. But offensively, this is the best that we've seen Rudy offensively in terms of the gravity that, that, that he commands rolling down the lane. His hands have gotten a lot better. He makes traffic catches a lot more frequently than he used to early in his career. He's one of the best finishers in the league. He's one of the best offensive rebounders, rebounders in the league. He's an under, underrated passer, so you can run a lot of your offense through him, and Quinn Snyder does in, uh, up, in the, up in that high post area uh, a lot. One of the other things that he's doing, he's actually finally posting up, using his, using his base as a strength, and then actually going up strong and, and scoring in post-up situations. So uh, he's a guy that, that feeds off of uh, perceived disrespect <laughs> yes and he gets a lot of that <laughs> yeah um, you know there are a lot of people who I don't think um, recognize how good he is and I think that he feeds off of that uh, and, and you've seen that in the last month and the, the last six weeks how good he's been should he be an all-star yes is he gonna be an all-star very it's going to be hard, isn't very it? Very debatable. The West is just so full of great players. The West is full of great players. I, I think he should be. Um, but, you know, if, if Luka Doncic makes the All-Star team, that takes us away from a right. spot from somebody. And it's probably going to take us away from a spot yeah. from Rudy. Now, that being said, if the Jazz continue on this run, and, you know, by February 1st, they're in potentially in the top five of the Western Conference um, or top six, you can make a case that, that you know, the coaching, the coaches and, and, and the players um, could, that could open something up. Well, you, you mentioned the respect he doesn't get sometimes. I think the coaches in the league know exactly who he is, so yeah. that should definitely help yeah, his cause. absolutely. So, Tony, thanks so much. Hey, check out his article in The Athletic. He just wrote the about athletic. that jazz defense that's killing it right now. Trust me, it's worth the cost to sign up for The Athletic. Tony, thanks so much. Appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, we'll see how the Jazz do this week. Five straight games against division opponents. It's a big week. It's a big week. You got Portland, you got Denver, you got Minnesota, you got Minnesota again, then you have Portland again. That big Denver game's going to be big, fun. Yes, <laughs> yes. Awesome. Portland and Denver will be fun. Yes. And some big thunder rolling through Cedar City. Can we show that on TV? The super fan helping his favorite team win four straight. BYU women's basketball team with a huge win over number 13 Gonzaga on Thursday night, hoping to keep the momentum rolling today against Portland. The Cougars got off to a slow start, though a little bit of Gonzaga hangover. Trailed by 12 after the first quarter, but they got rolling thanks to Maria Albiero. 16 points off the bench, including three threes. Shaylee Gonzalez had a double-double, 11 points, 11 assists. A dime here to Albiero. The Cougars improved to 8-0 in WCC play. They beat Portland 79-71. to 
Let's go to Cedar City. Hey, Rod's been on vacation, but we found him watching Southern Utah. Oh, and he had a message for Deany Wimmer as well. Good to see you, Rod Zundel. Working on his dance moves. And hey, look, a dunk for Southern Utah. Harrison Butler had a great one last week. He had one there. Cameron Aluyatan, impressive conference play. Nice spin move back, back there. And he was three for three from three point range. Finished with 21 points. And Southern Utah wins their fourth straight game. Fourth ranked Red Rocks visiting 21st ranked Oregon State in gymnastics. Michaela Skinner on vault 9.975. One judge even gave her a 10. I think the rest of them should have. Kari Lee. 9.875 on vault. Michaela on bars now, 9.925. Boy, they are lucky to have her. She is the best gymnast in the country. This is her floor routine, 9.9. .9. Red Rocks win this one. They score over 197 for the third straight week. All right, when we come back, get to know these Fab Four freshmen at Utah. Just wanted to get better as a program and as a team. Utah women's basketball, 16 and one, thanks in part to a stellar freshman class. Get to know why they're stars on and off the floor next. Utah women's basketball team has its sights set on reaching the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2011. With a 16-1 start after last night's win over Colorado, the Utes are well on their way. Megan Huff, their senior star, drops a three to get things started. She led the team with 17 points. Then the freshman class got rolling. Drew Gilton, the three, she had eight points, eight assists. And Gilton setting up another freshman, Andrea Torres. She scored 14 off the bench. The Utes roll the buffs, 78 to 59. One of the reasons for the Utes' success this season is the play of their talented freshman class. It's not easy joining a program and having instant impact, but these Fab Four freshmen have done just that. We thought it'd be fun to get to know them a little bit better. My name is Naya. My name is Andy. My name is Dre. And I'm Drew. <laughs> there was no none of this. Yeah, that's all them. I'm, I just stay like this. Okay. <laughs> what drew me to Utah was kind of like the similarities to home and kind of the conference and the coaching staff, like just like kind of my relationships and how they built with them. Yeah. Um, for me was the environment, the coaches, and I actually knew a person here on the team, so that makes me like more confident to come here. Um, for me, um, I just love everything. Like when I came here, I seemed like it seemed like it was a lot of support, like off the court with like academics and things like that. And I was able to bond well with the team. Went out to eat, and it felt like normal, like my high school team. Um, yeah, for me as well, uh, just the fact that it's a big, bigger city, but you have the opportunities of going on hikes or to the lake. It was just a great atmosphere to be in, as well as I fit well with the team and the coaches' mentality. And just being a part of the Pac-12 and a team on the rise and hope just to change change a program. I think from the beginning when we got here this summer, we all just connected as sisters. And I think that is a big credit to our seniors. They're really supportive of us, like giving us rides because we freshmen, we don't have cars yet. Even like off the court, I think that we're all here for each other no matter what. Like um, when any situation like school or family or things like that, we always are able to talk to each other no matter what the situation is and we don't judge each other, we're just there for each other. We're now uh, exceeding expectations, but I don't think that was a specific goal. We just wanted to get better as a program and as a team. Like we focus on what we have to do first before we focus on anyone else. <laughs> okay. Keep ducking questions. Well, I agree with Dre and Drew again, but I feel like it just goes to like, um, we're trying to take care of what we need to take care of. We're not really worried about anything else. We're just kind of making sure what we're doing is our best and like what the coaches have put in, we're doing it to the, like, the right standard and the results come after that. Handshake? Oh. Um, do you want to? <laughs> um, what is it like coming to a different country and having to speak your second language? Um, it's for sure pretty hard to adjust, like explaining stories and like talking, more, talking and understanding everything. But I think I'm doing pretty well with English. Hey, mom. Hey, dad. Hey, grandma. Hey, I'm just. <laughs> Hey, Canada! <laughs> For real. Hi, Mom, too. <laughs> Dad, you too, Mom. Mom. Okay, back. Let's go. Go, you! Oh, yeah. Hello, Lisa. Yeah, we there. <laughs> Anyone? 
Go Utes. Go Utes. They are having a lot of fun this year on the Hill. The Utes host Cal and sixth ranked Stanford uh, next weekend. When we come back, we've got some high school hoops, a thriller in Cache Valley, and play in Region 4 is finally underway. Now some high school basketball, a great game last night in Cache Valley. Skyview hosting Green Canyon. They're developing a rivalry. He's fired up for this game. So are we. This is Skyview. Sam Phipps throwing down. He had 10 points. It was Green Canyon with the lead in the fourth quarter. Dewey Panther for three. Wolves were up seven. Skyview rallies to take the lead back. Mason falls over two of his game high 27. Future U. Bobcats up 70 69 with 45 seconds left. Green Canyon answers though. Panther again with a three. So clutch. Green Canyon goes up 72 to 70, and that is the final. The Wolves win on the road. All right, the top five teams in 6A and Region 4, they started region play this week. We'll start with Lone Peak and Bingham Knights, the defending state champions. One point game through three quarters. Jared Jensen sparks the Knights. Just three sends them on a nine to one run to start the quarter. The Miners chipping away though. Luke Tuller buries a three. Then he forces a turnover. Miles Youngblood cuts the lead to one. Lopik doesn't panic, though. Noah Smithson from the corner. He had 17. And the Knights win the region opener 69-58. Westlake at Pleasant Grove. The oop. The big man, Matt Van Komen. It's 26-18 Vikings late in the third. Kavika Akina hits four threes. 16 points as PG gets some separation. They go on to win 63-48. Van Komen had 11. Vikings 13 and 2 now on the season. Over to Region 7, Brighton and Timview. BYU commit Nate Hansen could not miss. He hits the corner three. And then later in the half, Hansen again. Boy, BYU could use his shooting. He hit six threes, scored 30 points, and Timview wins by 16. Provo's Lavender Briggs. She's signed to play at Florida. She's averaging 31 points per game this year. She has some 40 point games. On track to break the season scoring record in the state last night against Springville. She was held at just 15, had a pair of threes, but her team gets the 47 to 44 win over Springville. All right, a lot of college hoops coming up tonight. Utah State tries to stay hot in the Mountain West Conference. They host Colorado State. We'll have that and more coming up tonight at 9 o'clock. We have a 9 o'clock newscast tonight. So until then, so long, everyone. Thanks for watching.